The glowworm is a beetle. The adult male has wings and does not glow. This is the adult male. Its wings and wing cases are spread out. It's often found on either wild or garden flowers, just like many other insects. This is a close view of its head. The adult female has no wings and glows. Females are quite different in appearance from males. They look rather like caterpillars or grubs about half an inch long. At dark, as they crawl on the stems of plants, the glow can be seen just under the tip of the abdomen. These females aren't easily seen on the ground, but at night their glow is visible even from as far away as 20 yards. Eggs are laid in summer. They hatch in autumn, and the young come out into the open in the following spring. This female glowworm is going under a stone to lay eggs. We see her now choosing a suitable place to deposit them. They're small, dark and round. Here's a cluster of four. The young come out in spring. At this stage, they all look like females. They move very much like caterpillars, having a set of true legs attached to the thorax. They often make for plants of one sort or another. The glowworm's head is interesting. It can be pushed out from the scale-like covering by means of a long neck. On the head are two curved, hollow, sharply pointed horns. The first work undertaken by these glowworms is to hunt snails. They mostly seek out the striped kind, often to be found amongst grass or on the stems of plants. The glowworm has a rosette made up of a number of very small sticky fingers. It uses this rosette to help it to grip the stems of plants. But it can only move slowly. Sometimes even the snail gets away. In a moment, you'll be able to see the little drop of fluid left behind when the rosette releases its hold. On the ground, the glowworm may do better than amongst the plants. With jerky movements, it pursues the snail, and in the end, it usually catches it. The rosette proves useful again. The glowworm employs it to attach itself to the snail's shell. Sometimes glowworms may be seen dragging along both snail and shell. Before actually starting the meal, they inject an anaesthetic into the snails by means of their hollow horns. If you watch carefully, you'll see the glowworm inject the anaesthetic just behind the head of the snail. Now. If we lift the glowworm away, we see that the snail appears to be without feeling. With no interference, however, the grub would start its meal at once and would gradually eat its way right into the snail shell. 
It spends many hours doing nothing else but eat steadily. After this meal, it uses its rosette to mop up any remaining traces of snail. By this time, its skin is very tight. The glowworm cannot increase in size until the skin is shed. We see here how it's done. The glowworm emerges, leaving the old skin behind. It's now lighter in colour, but very much the same in shape. There's another change of skin in the summer, when both adult males and females emerge. This is an adult male coming out. He's now complete with wings and wing cases, and can be seen on wild or garden flowers like other insects. At night, he'll be attracted by the glow of the female. They'll mate, and then the eggs will be laid. The life cycle will continue.